Every now and then, I find myself needing to use Windows. Of course, I use Windows for work, but in my personal use cases, there's some instances where using Wine or any other form of emulation that's available on Linux to run Windows applications just doesn't get the job done. And I have to fire up my Windows 10 virtual machine for whatever that purpose may be. Maybe I'm testing some software to see how it behaves in Windows. Maybe I'm testing for any new security vulnerabilities in Windows. But there's a big problem with Windows. And it's not just it being proprietary software. I mean, that's kind of a given when you're dealing with Microsoft. But the real problem that seems to get worse as Windows is updated and new versions come out is that it gets more and more bloated. And I mean, it's already bloated by default, right? Like just look at this task manager and this is a fresh install of Windows. I haven't even really done anything on here. I haven't installed any new software and yet it's using 1.5 gigs at idle. Uh, it's jumping up to about 10% CPU usage and I don't even have anything else open. Like I can get these stats on Linux, even lower than this on Linux, and have a whole browser open. And it's even worse when you factor in using Windows as a virtual machine with a limited RAM supply. Like I can only really give about four gigs of DDR3 RAM to this VM and like two or three CPU threads. So Windows needs debloating more so than probably any other OS out there. Now, in the past, the way that you would go about doing this was pretty long and painful. Uh, you would fire up services.msc and look through all of these different services to pretty much figure out what you can turn off for your particular use case. Uh, then you would have to go and do some registry edits and you know, turn off, change values in there, and also go through pages and pages of settings. Plus, there's two different settings within Windows 10. So you've got this setting, but then you've also got your control panel. So you gotta poke around through here, and it's just a huge waste of time to do this manually. But I found a handy little PowerShell script that can do this for us. So it's called a Windows 10 debloater and it's right here on this github page go ahead and maximize this for you guys so yeah you can download this and it'll automatically go through and do a lot of debloating for you it also turns off telemetry um, you can nuke cortana through this you can get rid of onedrive a lot of uh, those type of things you probably don't want to use, especially if you're just using this as a testing VM like I do. So yeah, let's just get right into it. This is the quick download link here. So we can just copy that. And in order to run this, like I said, we need to use PowerShell. So go ahead and fire that up as an administrator. And we should just be able to paste this in. Oh, I did it too many times. Had a little bit of system lag there. All right, let's just do it once. And there we go. So this is the little GUI that you get. So really easy to actually run it from here. You don't have to know commands or no PowerShell or anything like that. Um, so yeah, let's go through what we want to do. I'm just going to kind of do this the quick way. Let's disable Cortana. And let's remove all bloatware. Oh, this does also remove some apps that are considered bloated as well. Um, like I saw someone complaining about some of it in the issues section of this GitHub. Um, so it removes like camera and microphone because, you know, it's not really necessary in, in my opinion, especially in this use case. Like I don't even use a camera or microphone within the VM. Uh, so if you don't want to do that, then you might want to 
go through and remove with a customized blacklist so that you don't nuke some of the apps that you find useful that other people consider bloat. So let's see, what else can we do? Well, I might as well just close Edge because I don't really need it open and it might actually interfere with this script while it's running. Uh, so let's uninstall OneDrive. All right, so it has to stop Explorer in order to do that. All right, and everything came back. Um, let's also disable telemetry. Yeah, and you can see over here on the side everything that it's doing. Um, and let's see, what else can we do? Oh, let's remove the registry keys. And, um, oh yeah, let's do this. Remove the Edge PDF takeover. It's always so annoying that Microsoft Edge defaults to your PDF uh, reader. All right, so it did that. And let's go ahead and enable dark mode too. Why not? All right, so I think that's all of the relevant tasks to do. So I'm gonna close out of this. And I'm going to reboot the machine, and let's see if we are using less resources. All right, so we are back in, and let's see. So yeah, Cortana is dead, she's not there. Oh, also I would say this is a better way to disable Cortana than the other method that I showed you guys in the past, because uh, the previous method I showed you guys pretty much nuked this whole Windows search bar. I mean, you can still launch your apps manually, and that's, you know, I can I can live with that, but some people obviously don't want to do that, especially if you're actually booting into Windows 10 on hardware. I'd imagine you would still want to have this so that you can find like a you know control panel and stuff like that. Um, let's see. So we got our dark mode turned on, and let's look at our task manager see if it made any difference. Yeah, it made a little bit of a difference. Um, let's see, I should probably open up services because some people say, oh, you you know, you weren't running services.msc. So let's see, does that add another half a gig? No, it doesn't. So yeah, that's, and that's pretty significant, right? Like we went from 1.5 gigs at idle to just one gig at idle. Uh, CPU looks like it was about the same. I mean, your CPU kind of spikes a little bit whenever you turn on Windows. Uh, that's just a Windows thing. So yeah, easy way that you can debloat your Windows system. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for you guys for that GitHub. And all the instructions to use it are there on the page. You can just copy that link into PowerShell like I did. Of course, make sure you run it as an administrator so that the script can actually do everything that it needs to do.